Hey there, it's Andrew Cartwright here, and I've got some hot and sexy and expensive stuff to talk to you about. Yes, I'm not talking about your New Year's Eve outfit. I'm talking about real estate, some very interesting real estate. How would you like to live in the most expensive city, in one of the most expensive and exclusive areas, and pay rent like you were in the poorest neighborhood in town? Well, your wish, your dream, is now going to be a reality for 8,000 people who live in New York. They're targeting affluent neighborhoods to push affordable housing, and they just passed a zoning change there to be able to get people to be able to be in this neighborhood. This is New York's most expensive city in America. It's getting affordable housing smack dab in the middle of one of the most expensive areas. It's unbelievable in the middle of New York City's most affluent areas. You're going to not want to miss that. A lot of other states are actually looking to do the exact same thing. We're seeing some areas in California. You're going to see this in probably quite a few areas. So if you've ever want to live in a city that's awesome that you could afford, there are areas that are popping up right now. So you're going to find out about this affordable housing, how Philadelphia is got is handing out affordable housing vouchers and who can get them who they're for and why another city is struggling to hand out those same vouchers how they're literally sitting up uh, setting up a court this is the opinion section where i'm going to cover my own personal opinion as a landlord believing in life liberty and property might be a little upsetting for some people but renter strike is back as one city is capping renter price hikes for landlords, I'm going to have some tough talk about that for landlords as well as, you know, we have taxes that go up, cost goes up, maintenance goes up, people want more to fix the properties, and there's going to be a lot going on there. We've also got what's coming into place in 2022. We've got a special court for rental disputes being set up. For many housing, you know, seems to be disappearing. And when it's, when's it going to be made? When are developers like myself, who's done a couple hundred homes, industrial, nightclubs, houses, custom homes, when are real estate guys like me going to get back in the game? I'm going to tell you why I have been resistant in the recent years from developing anything. Of course, I've developed in the past. Why I've resisted that as a real estate expert, a real estate broker, uh, developer. I'm going to go through that. That's my bag. That's what I love. So I want to go deep dive into this. Hope you're having a fantastic day. It's Saturday. This is your housing update for November 27, 2021. My goal is to give you the best access to information sourced from the web and give you access to those government money for yourself, your loved ones, and your business. Not handout money. I had somebody talk to me about, hey, why, why, why are you talking about handout money? No. People need a helping hand. I just met with a client who got PUA, literally got PUA, right, from watching my videos, never knew it before, actually got that for self-employment workers. I've talked to people who got PPP from the channel, all people that are not sitting on a couch, literally was saying that you, you cater to couch, people on the couch. No, I don't cater to people on the couch. I cater to everyone. Like, that's the goal, whether you want to have a business, you're looking for housing, whatever it is. Like, I, I care about you. Uh, that's why I have a loan program. To, in 2009, I started it. 12 different programs for businesses, loans up to $5 million. You can easily, it's all digital, so you can go online and get pre-approved in 15 minutes. I have a real estate program that's a $10,000 course that's ridiculous. It's $99 from an expert like me. $10,000 for the exact information, basically, almost, if you had to go to school and pay for this. I have it for you with my own experience mixed in covering negative, neutral, positive debt, when to buy, how to buy, market cycles, and what asset classes to buy. All for 99 bucks. You can go spend $10,000 with somebody else. Literally, you can go spend $10 with somebody else and get the same information, basically. I mean, real estate's basic. This stuff's been around since the thousands of years. It ain't going anywhere. It's the best way to maintain and hold wealth. So make sure you just 
stay tuned to this channel for personal finance, crypto, stock market, real estate to generate your income, save you money. That's my goal. Let's first off go into Mayor Bill de Blasio and the city council. They approved that proposal that could bring thousands of new homes, 8,000 to be exact, including many affordable ones to wealthy neighborhoods. Hmm. Yes, this is a big issue. If you know anything about real estate, this is a big, big one for us. These are neighborhoods like Gowanese and Soho, Soho in lower Manhattan, an upscale neighborhood known for boutiques and cobblestone streets. It's beautiful there. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it is gorgeous. De Blasio said, quote, these are, this is a big deal. This is a big moment. And what does it say is, this is a city committed to the right kind of development, end quote. And Guanese, these plans for, quote, fully affordable, end quote. I'll tell you, it's 950 square foot unit developments. 50% of the units will be affordable on average to families that earn $51,200 a year. Then there's another 40% of the units that could be reserved for families earning between $81,920 to $1,222.88. And I got to tell you, 950 square feet in New York is pretty awesome. I got to just tell you, you live in New York for New York, not to live in a place, right? I live in Nevada, 12,000 square foot home. That makes sense here. Doesn't make sense. I mean, that would be great in New York. But this is incredible news for the people in New York. This is happening in California where they're also pushing for the same thing. Lots of very affluent cities are going to come up against it. Even Austin's going to have to deal with this. Finally, affordable housing. And why I'm going to get to it later, why a lot of guys like me have been sitting on the fence, not jumping into the market so recently as in the last two years. Before I move on to the next story, I want to let, remind you that I'm giving away $2,000 when we hit 200,000 subscribers. All you do is join the channel by subscribing, like the video, and throw a comment, and wait to hear from me. We're going to pick a random comment when we hit 200,000 subscribers. I'd love you to get the $2,000. Hope you win. So good luck. Meanwhile, Philadelphia announced Tuesday that it will use 735,000 worth of the federal funds for housing and urban development, HUD grant, basically, HUD. If you know anything about real estate, HUD is like the best money on the planet. This award comes from Foster Youth to Independent Initiatives with a goal of investing in local cross-system collateral uh, collaborative efforts to assist young people, 18 to 24 years old, um, ages to foster care and who are at risk of experiencing homelessness. So we're gonna reach down even to kids. The funds will provide 75 housing vouchers of all the way available through December 1st, 2021. The vouchers will cover a maximum of 36 months of rental assistance, three years of rent covered. These vouchers will help teens who have been in child welfare system since 16 years old or older left foster care or will leave foster care within 90 days. In accordance with the transition plan described in section 475.5H, the article is down below, of the Social Security Act and must be homeless or at risk of homelessness. This is obviously great news for the people of Philadelphia, for those kids, especially those at-risk youth. These housing vouchers will go a long way to help, and it'll be a nice, nice for these less fortunate to be able to get the opportunity to find a place to live. Again, this is to help people get on their feet. I hope they do with these vouchers. Finally, on the flip side of the voucher news, more than 1,000 families in Austin, Texas are still waiting to get their vouchers. So we've got some going out and some that, that can't seem to go out. In 2018, more than 15,000 people applied. 2,000 people were selected, yet the actual number of families waiting is still 1,461 families. With Biden's Build Back Better Act, the waiting list will be reopened soon. It also means doubling the number of vouchers. 
That's good news. But who knows if it means people will actually get what's due to them or what's been planned for them. As the cost of housing soars, one old idea is starting to get traction with voters. Rent control. Yes, voters in Minneapolis and St. Paul this month approved a ballot initiative to enable the Twin Cities to cap rent increases in Santa Ana, California. Did so in October. And Mich Michelle Juan of Boston, the new mayor, campaigned earlier this year on restoring rent control, an idea that Massachusetts Republican governor has repeatedly objected to but says we'd be willing to discuss to help tackle housing woes. Quote, we're starting to see a shift, end quote, said Malcolm, um, director of the program at the Affordable Housing and Tenant Advocate Rights Group in the City Alliance. Quote, we're absolutely anticipating more support and our member organizations are preparing to re-engage in the city and statewide efforts to win rent control, end quote. Real problem is building and the permitting and the lending process has been the real problem for lots of these places. This is basically what I've seen personally is a lot of developers like myself have been concerned about the different ripples in the system. We anticipated in 2015 or 16 there could be a market correction. We also predicted that that was probably going to happen in 2018 because what happens with developers like myself at some point, the banks decide they get scared. And even though we're building, they stop lending or raise rates. So when you're a developer, you have to figure on a five-year cycle when you're developing a project. You have to figure, I've got to get my land, I've got to entitle it, I've got to put my plans together, get them approved, I've got to get my structural, all through the civil engineering process, get everybody to agree on it, and by the time I go vertical, it could be three years, by the time I'm finished, it could be 18 months after that, by the time I sell it, I'm out in five years. That means every real estate person, with the way the market has been since 2008, when you could buy a house or a building for 25% of what it costs to build. It finally came up to the point where you could sell it for what you built it for. Now there's a profit in building, but none of us know how long we can, it'll go but if we'll actually make money in the future if they raise rates. And because for every 1%, typically you can see values drop by 10%. So that's what a lot of people are weighing. And will the banks be lending? So you got to gauge all those things. And with the market, the market has been, for a lot of developers, it's been a rocky road since 2008, when most of those developers, like myself, were in millions and millions of projects and had to restructure all those, got them fixed, and then started on the path, and then wondered when we were going to have a, a market problem again. So we still don't have enough supply built because of these market disruptions, because of lending, because of what happened in 2008, we've had a really touch and go housing cycle where we haven't had a predictable cycle that many of us could count on that we can build. And maybe if we go into a recession, not too bad. We just hold on to the property. We don't lose everything. Well, a lot of people still have those stains from that. Manchester, New York, a new Rochester housing court, though, will be established in 2022. State legislators arrived to deliver funds that were turned to a section of Rochester City Court into one of its only hearing housing claims, several disputes on illegal um, lockouts, kicking people out, and code violations. One of the problems with more intervention, like rent control, which is tough, what that does ultimately is can lower the actual value of the property of somebody who owns that property. You cap the rent, the value of that property is calculated based on how much that property makes. If you cap what it can make, well, the property value gets capped. It's pretty bad for people who own property there. So if you're in rent control areas and you own property, you need to be concerned about that because that could cap your cash flow and your profits. If you're in an area looking to buy apartments in areas that could come under rent control, I would say be very careful. That's my opinion.
Now, you should speak to a professional in your own area. I am a broker, a real estate broker. I have six regulated licenses. I have a business broker's license as well. Um, so I'm telling you, this is not advice. You're not my client. I'm not giving you advice, but I'm telling you based on my own opinion, that's where I stand as far as the market goes. I want to see some stability. Now on that affordable housing side, there's some incredible loans. There's a lot of opportunities for a wide range of people that want to get into real estate. This could be the most exciting time in real estate in decades because we need homes. There's money out there. And if the government keeps, keeps the money flowing, there's money to be made. Well, that's your housing market update for Thursday, November 25th, 2021. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy your weekend. I'm Andrew Cartwright. Stay safe out there. I love you. Take care.